Hello, all music lovers. Hello, all piano music lovers. Hello, all Ludwig van Beethoven lovers. If you are here for the first time, um, probably you don't know that I have already accomplished a huge project of such videos and analysis of all Chopin's music for the piano. Uh, but maybe you already know, maybe you know most of my videos, so maybe you are a little surprised uh, that here I am to talk about Ludwig van Beethoven and his great masterpiece for the piano, 15 Variations and the Fugue on the Eroica theme. We can officially call this video as the beginning of big, large series of videos with analysis of many masterpieces written for the piano. Not only by one composer, not only by Ludwig van Beethoven. There will be others. There will be Mozart, there will be Grieg, um, there will be maybe Schubert, um, Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff, maybe many, many, uh, many great composers, many great pieces of music. Uh, for now, I don't have any random plan for that, uh, because, you know, everything depends on what I have in my fingers, um, how many concerts I have, because I'm a concert pianist as well. So this will be maybe a little chaotic, but in the end it will make a very nice sense, let's say. <laughs> okay, because today we have the piece of music which lasts 25 minutes, so we have quite a lot to talk about. And now the first question is why I want to start from this piece. And I have to tell you a short story from my life before we start to, to play um, as to why I decided to explain the music and why I decided to make this analysis and why I decided to talk during my concerts as well because that's what I'm doing usually when I have a concert. Um, I remember back in 2009, I was in New York City, I was attending a, a summer festival, and I remember very well the piano recital um, by a Korean pianist who played this great piece of music that we are going to talk about today. And at that time, I remember I was, I was 24 years old, still a student in the music academy, and frankly, I didn't know this piece at all. Of course, I knew most of Beethoven's sonatas, or maybe all of them, and uh, concertos and other pieces, but these variations I have never heard before. I had never heard before. So, when I saw in the program, okay, 15 variations and the fugue, then I sat, sat down and I said, okay, I'm going to count to see, because, you know, I'm a composer as well, I, I write a little music, so um, it was very interesting for me how it is constructed also. And then Beethoven made a huge fun of me. You know, at the beginning everything was clear. I heard the theme, I heard the first variation, the second, the third, and then after the third variation, I got completely lost. And then I got angry. I was so angry with Beethoven. And I didn't know, am I so stupid? Why I can't, what happened in this music? Why I can't hear? Why I can't count the, the variations? And so on and so on. It was a big mess. And when the concert finished, I immediately tried to find the score. I found the score. I looked at the score. And then everything immediately was clear for me. But now, as a pianist who plays this piece for the audience, I want the audience to understand. Because I think that we are missing a lot if we don't really understand what's going on. And especially we are missing the feeling of the great genius of this piece and of Beethoven as a constructor. Because this is a masterpiece which is geniusly constructed, if I can say so. So what is really happening here. Now I play for you the, the beginning and the first three variations and let's imagine, try to imagine me 
when I was 24, sitting in the audience in New York City and enjoying the concert for the first minute or so. <laughs> well, of course, the, the pianist was great and, and um, the piece was fabulous, so that's why I decided to play it after this concert. But what could I feel at that moment? Everything starts like a typical set of variations. And then we have the theme. A theme which we know very well because it is also in Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 3, so called Eroica Symphony. number one well nothing special but I thought okay maybe later it will be more interesting I, w I thought that time that Beethoven is slowly getting hot you know now it's just... Relation number two. Also nice. should be. And what happens now? Suddenly... Well, of course, the melody that I know, because I knew uh, the third symphony by Beethoven, so-called Eroica symphony, but I didn't know where I am. I mean, I, what is this? Where, what, what, what happened with the variations? I mean, suddenly we have the melody, the new melody. Well, I mean, what is this? And then when I opened the score, I finally found out. But now going back to my, um, my, my thinking about the audience and the concert, as a pianist, I, I can't expect everybody to know the score before the concert. I can't expect everybody to read, you know, the whole book, musicologist book about this piece and about how it's going to, of course. And still, I want my audience to understand. I want them to know what I'm playing and to know why this piece is so fantastically constructed. That's why I, after this concert, I thought, no, no, no. When I play this piece, I will always explain a little, at least, what to expect so that people don't think, will not feel like I felt when I was sitting in the audience that night. So what we have here? And what is this piece? This piece is very, very interesting also from the point of view how, when it was written and, and what is the theme. Uh, the piece was written in 1802 and um, this is very interesting because the 
this theme that we hear here for the variations, Beethoven used also one year earlier in his ballet music that he composed for the Creatures of Prometheus. He composed it one year earlier than this. So probably he loved the theme, so he used it again in these variations. He had a lot of imagination of how he can change the theme. This theme is very, very good for variations. Very good. Um, it provokes to change changes, you know, and very making variations. One year later, in 1803, Beethoven wrote another set of variations for the same theme, and this is this very well-known last movement of his third symphony, the Eroica Symphony. That's the history of the theme, but it's not the end of the theme, of the history about the theme, um, because, my friends, probably this is not the original Beethoven theme, probably this is a copy, probably he stole it, or he got inspiration from another composer. Which composer? I will tell you in a while. But now I want to explain what happens at the beginning. We have the theme, which is very, very characteristic, which in fact is not really the main theme of the variations. Beethoven writes here, Introduzione con, col basso del tema. Introduzione col basso del tema. Which means in Italian, introduction of the bass line of the theme. Bass line of the theme. So what Beethoven is doing, he's showing us the, the skeleton, the general um, main notes of the theme, which he will put in the bass later and on which he will build the whole melody. And this is very characteristic. Up, down, up. Faster, 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 faster. So it goes faster. And then we have this silence and then bam, 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 like in the fifth symphony. Piano. And the end. Only two phrases. Each of these phrases is repeated, but because the piece is so long, 25 minutes, maybe I will, I will not be repeating every phrase, but I don't know yet, but uh, probably by make it a little shorter. Um, so that's, and then what happens next? This is the, the theme that we hear. Then these three variations that we hear are, are, are variations, but there is something more. Uh, in, in each of the variation, Beethoven adds one voice. Can you imagine? So what we've heard now was just the melody without any voicing, without any harmony, just melody, one voice, one instrument. In the first variations, a duet, we have two voices. We can hear the uh, main theme in the left hand and the new melody in the right hand. second is very interesting. We have three voices now. And how to play three voices in two hands? Hmm. Very clever. The left hand is playing two voices. One voice here and then another voice here. Again the first, the second, the first, the second. And the right hand is playing in the middle of register the main theme of the bass. So listen. Everything in, in three voices. And then we 
have the third variation, four voices now. Four. How to play four voices in uh, two hands? Well, the main voice has the melody, the theme. In the middle we have two voices, two, played with the right hand, that in thirds are playing and the fourth voice, the cello all together it sounds like this variations just here now just to check before we had the bass of the theme so now let's play the bass and the theme together and let's listen to the bass if it really is the same we had the silence here and then in the theme of the variations instead of the silence we have the figuration and then three times it and the ending so everything works perfectly and that's the main theme of the variations now is it really Beethoven's theme well, that's the question. In 1784, Muzio Clementi published his Piano Sonatas Opus 13, a set of, of six piano sonatas. Beethoven surely knew these sonatas because he knew Clementi, he knew every music for piano and he, he loved it. So, then. In sonata in F minor, opus 13, number 6, the last movement of this sonata sounds like this. Well, it's a little faster, but I just wanted to show you the theme. Listen. It's exactly the same theme, but this theme is in minor and has no rhythm. So Beethoven changed it to major and made a rhythm. And now we don't really know Muzio Clementi's Sonata, but we know Eroica Symphony because of this theme. Is it a coincidence? We don't know, but I just wanted to show you this just for curiosity. And now let's listen to the theme and then let's start the long and very, very interesting, full of adventures journey through all the 15 worlds, all the 15 variations based on this theme.
the first variation. As maybe if you watched my videos about Chopin's variations, I made a few, I made three actually. One is Souvenir de Paganini, one is Variations Opus 12, and one is Berceuse, this three set of variations. I told you that variations in classical period were to be very strict. What I mean is that when we have the variation and when we sing the theme, it should all work exactly in the same. So it should be the same. So it's a very strict form. It's not a free improvisation. Some people think, oh, variation on just a free improvisation on the theme. No, 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 not at all. It must be very, very strict. And now we have the first variation and already the main theme seem to be lost. But it seems to be lost, but we hear the bass. And if we sing the melody, of course it works perfectly. I will play for you the variation and I will try to sing the theme at least a little so that we can hear. variation is based on the right hand figuration and the left hand which is not changing it stays the same as in the first almost the same as in the first variation let's uh, the first theme i mean the theme let's listen <laughs> The second variation, it's a very virtuoso, it's really spectacular and demanding for the right hand. And very interesting is the, uh, the second phrase, because in the second phrase we will hear again this boom, 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 these three notes in the left hand, but at the same time the right hand will be running very fast from up to down, from the right side of the keyboard to the left side of the keyboard in a very fast tempo. So very virtuoso variation that reminds us of some kind of etudes or uh, studies, you know. <laughs> theme here? Probably not. Let's sing. Ta -ta. my friends everything works genius fantastic and very regular the third variation is changing a little bit the piano technique we have chords very sharp very typical Beethoven rhythm full of um, unexpected accents full of syncopated notes so notes which are too early so it's really electrifying music let's listen to this
And again, let's sing. Everything works. Okay, variation number four. We don't really have to sing because we have the it the the parts of the theme are in the right hand. Now variation number four brings the figuration to the left hand. So the left hand has the figuration, right hand just very um, simple chords. <laughs> of this bam 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 and then okay variation number five reminds me of a music box do you know what a music box is a little box that when you open it starts to play the music and usually well we usually know the music box is made of or we have Right? Or sometimes we have, I had the music box that we had this... Um, um, um. Brahms. Here we have something like this. And this is variation number five. Variation number six is in C minor. C minor is the key, the tonality, um, is the minor sister of the main E flat major in which we have the whole variation. There was a very normal practice in classical period to have one variation in minor. So this is C minor. And C minor in Beethoven's music, you probably know if you are a Beethoven lover, we have... We have this... The symphony. Or... sonata and many other examples and here we also have the drama so this will be exactly the same but in dark and a little dramatic atmosphere typical Beethoven number seven. Version number seven is very very funny. It's officially a canon all'ottava, which means a canon in octave. Canon, you know what canon is? The melody starts in one voice and the second voice is a bit later. We have in Poland a very very famous uh, canon melody. And then I think it's French, isn't it? And then it's I think it's French. And then starts the second voice. And then the kids are learning how to. And you can you can play like. 
like this forever, you know? So here we have the same thing, but a little bit with a little bit more humor. Because left hand is always late. When we come to the second phrase, left hand gets furious on the right hand. And the left hand is just banging the piano with its fist in the bass, shouting to the right hand, please wait for me. And then there is a shock, a silence, and everything comes to, again, the canon. So left hand is never on time, even after being so furious. when Beethoven he seems to already know that in 1810 so in eight years from that time in Żelazowa Wola close to Warsaw one Polish fantastic artist will be born and will write music like this number nine again um, the energy explodes the bass is in the left hand of course with the main theme and the right hand has quite uncomfortable um, two voices um, figurations so that's the idea of this. They are going up and then down and up and down. And again, we can sing the theme. Da, da, da. looking into the future. Now he predicts a jazz music and a kind of jazz improvisations. Um, right, left hand will have only one note going from left part to the right part of the keyboard. And the right hand will have something in the middle. In between, I would say, in between of the left hand, we have a jazzy right hand. One more time, please, sorry. The 
second phrase. And variation number 11. In variation number 11 we have a kind of caricature of Mozart, but car positive caricature, not negative, you know, not having fun of Mozart, uh, laughing at Mozart, but Beethoven is now trying to write the music in the style of Wolfgang Adolf Mozart, uh, who Beethoven, of course, admired very much. Um, so, you know Mozart music, let's compare, because I think it will be very funny, for example... Um, Beethoven, who is trying to be Mozart, it is even an opera-like because we will have two voices, one in the bass and one in upper register. Characteristic bows, you know, like in menuets. And now we have two probably most difficult variations of this set number 12 and number 13. Variation number 12 is based on the dialogue between two hands and uh, both hands have the very similar um, figurations made of um, more than one note so we have double notes and octaves but it's very interesting because the right hand comes first very silent left hand comes after very loud then right hand again silent, left hand again loud, and then they are closer, 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 and at the end they are together. So, like in Canon, left hand was never in time. Here, left hand managed to reach the right hand at the end. So, let's listen. <laughs> Let's see. Right hand, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and together. number 13 and here Beethoven is extremely evil he is just making fun of the pianist and writes especially um, the variation the music especially so that everybody who listens to this the pianist is thinking that the pianist is missing notes that the pianist is playing dirty that the pianist can't play because it's so difficult well the difficulties the difficulty of this variation is jumping from here to here, from here to here, all the time. Here in the top we have always the same one note. The left hand has the bass and in the middle we have simple chords. What's so special about it? Well, as you know, it's not so easy to reach this note, but if it were written like what I told you, it would sound like this. And it would be funny, it would be nice, and it would be not so difficult. But, my dear friends, bad and evil Beethoven writes a short, little very short note before this main note in the top, which is 
together with that note, creating the minor second. And now, how does it sound? Well, it sounds that as if the pianist never reached this note, that it's, it's always missing this up note. You know, it's in the higher register. Everybody can hear it. So it sounds really like the variations, the variation full of mistakes. It's really a problem because if, for example, the critic who is on the concert doesn't know that piece, never heard it before, can write a very bad critic, you know, can write in the newspaper, uh, you know, New York Times critic and the famous pianist missed all the notes in variation number 13. Oh my God, it can screw somebody's career, you know. Of course, I'm joking, but seriously speaking, it's really funny. Funny, but not for the pianist, especially if the audience doesn't know what's going on. But you know, so now let's listen and laugh. <laughs> Variation number 14 is a kind of transition, a kind of bridge to variation number 15. We have again a minor key, but this time it is E flat minor, which means it's the same key that we had at the beginning, but with one note different. So everything else is the same, the one note, and we suddenly have very melancholic and sad atmosphere. And this is a very beautiful uh, minore, so minor um, variation. When we hear the theme of the bass and we hear in the right hand and in the left hand we hear the melody. Let's listen. <laughs> Variation number 15, the last variation of this set. And here, my friends, we come to the point, the, the center of the piece. And in the center of the piece we have a very, very, very slow meditative contemplation-like variation. Like four times slower, really, seriously, I will show you four times slower than the theme. The whole variation lasts like six minutes. Six minutes, so it's, you know, longer than every Chopin's waltz, for example. Every Chopin waltz. But um, what's so special about it? What's so genius about it? There is a very special thing. Because when we listen to the whole piece, these 15 variations and the fugue based on the Eroica theme, we have the impression that we, we listen to variations, but also we are listening to the sonata, the whole sonata form. You know, in the sonata, in classical period, usually we had first movement, then slow, long movement and then finale the last movement 
Here we have a mixture of these two genres. Because after this long and slow variation, we will have the finale in the form of the fugue. So altogether we have like three genres here. We have the fugue, we have the sonata form and we have the variations. This is, my friends, simply genius. Now, what kind of tempo, if we want to uh, sing What is the tempo? And now you will not believe me. This is the tempo we should have in our head. So my friends, sit back, relax, take, take a glass of wine. We have time. Now we will have time. And what's also, I will play for you the whole variation, six minutes. In, in the meantime, I will be talking, of course, to explain, because this, is, this variation is very special. It's very different from all the others. That's why also I think it's like a separate piece of music, because it has a different construction. Um, of course, everything will be like always, very regular. The theme is the theme. We can sing it in a very slow tempo. But when the first phrase will be repeated, it will be different because there will be much more figurations and they, these figurations, they sound as if it's like taken from Baroque figurations, from the Baroque period. Very interesting. So we have the first phrase, then the, the repeated with more figurations, and then the second phrase, and then repeated again with more figurations. This is a very deep music, so a very substantial change from what we've heard before. first phrase repeated with more figurations second phrase so this with pam 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 and you know we will hear this pam 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 we will
repeated the second time with more figurations. Now we have the coda. Coda, which is based on the dialogue. Listen. The question. Waiting. What will you tell me? What will you answer me? I will answer you this. And then the then I will tell you this. for the answer We will have a huge crescendo and then diminuendo. So it seems like there is a storm which is slowly coming, coming, it's very close to us, we are afraid, and then it's going away. Now we have finale, we have the fugue. Uh, about the fugue I'm not going to talk too much. If you are not a musician but you are interested uh, in a few and um, very simple words what the fugue is, I invite you to watch the beginning of my video about uh, Chopin's Mazurka in C sharp minor opus 50 number 3. Opus 50 number 3. There is the fugue, I mean I'm talking about what is the fugue. Now I want to just very, very short tell you. We have in the fugue, which is from Baroque time, we always have the same construction. We have one only single voice that starts the theme, not too long theme. Then when it ends, it starts to play something else. And we have another, the second voice that starts to play the same theme, the very same theme theme that the first one when the second voice is finishing starts to play something else in the meantime the first voice plays something else and then the third voice is coming with the theme so they are like chasing each other chasing you know the word the fugue is a chase means a chase so they are chasing each other we will hear the theme and Johann Sebastian Bach, of course, was the master, was the greatest fugue composer. Um, and he was using a lot of different techniques in fugues. Sometimes in his fugues we had two themes. There was one theme and after, maybe in the middle of the fugue, the second theme were coming. Sometimes Bach jo connected them, so they were at the same time. Sometimes Bach also used uh, had fun with this and used the upside down version of the theme. Why am I talking about this here? Because Beethoven is doing exactly the same thing here, exactly the same techniques. He is showing that he is a master of fugue as well, that he is a great composer, a genius composer, and for him there is nothing difficult. Everything is easy. He can write everything he wants. The first theme of the fugue is taken from the very beginning of 
the piece. And then the scale down. This is the theme that we should follow and try to hear. How will sound the upside down theme? Well, upside down means when we go up in the first part, then we have to go down instead. So everything is upside down. So and then the scale also. The scale also is from down to up. Absolutely gorgeous, fantastic. The second theme will also appear in the middle. The second theme is taken from the main theme of the fugue, so there is nothing new. Right? So we know this all. There's nothing new. Old, old material. Nothing new. So I think, of course, I can talk about this fugue for another one hour, but I think it's, this video is quite long. So to make it as short as possible, I play the whole fugue for you. I try to talk in the middle. Hopefully I will not make mistakes because it's so hard. And if I talk as well, I don't know. But let's try. And we will try to catch the themes. And now I just want to tell you a little about this construction because it's very, very, very simple. We, had only, we will have only three parts. In part number one, we will have the first theme in many voices. Well, you have three voices, but they will be chasing each other. Part number two uh, brings the second theme. And now a fantastic thing will happen because the second theme will play together with the first one at the same time. Together. I show you. Part number three is the first theme upside down. And then everything will reach the huge climax and we all think that it will end the whole piece. That it should end the whole piece. And I have a big question for you, uh, Mr. Beethoven. Why you didn't? But about this we talk when I play the fugue for you. Okay, so let's, let's go. Let's go. The theme. <laughs> upside down.
suddenly we will have two more variations, two more. And you know, it's it's really it's really strange. Um, it seems like Beethoven forgot to write two variations, or it, he he wrote the fugue and then he thought, oh, but I still have some ideas. I can, I still have to. I have still. I I want to. I want to show more, but he couldn't put it back before the fugue, so he put it at the end. So uh, of course I'm I'm joking. I don't know if I'm right, but um, it's a little strange, you know. So only this kind of thinking make me understand the 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 idea of adding two more variations. Very innocent, but yet one of them is extremely hard. Now I want to present this for you. After all this climax, suddenly we have. As if we forgot how it sounds, you know? And now, the second time, I want to show you how evil and how bad Beethoven is. He is writing something so hard. This very little innocent melody is in the upper voice of the right hand and in the lower voice we have to play very fast trills. So very equilibristic moment for the hand. Mm. So that's that, yeah, that's how it is. That's how it is. And now the second phrase. Variation, and here in the left hand we will have the triumphal. You can't see me. We will have the triumphal choral made of the first theme. But in ninety-nine percent, or maybe even one hundred percent of recordings, even great pianists that I admire, I love, I don't hear this theme. In the left hand because what I hear is this well it's very easy to play like this but it's not what we should play in my opinion the really real theme is in the bottom at the bottom in the bottom voice in the bass and it's believe me if you don't play the piano or agree with me if you do play the piano that bringing out the melody in the left hand which is in the bass when we have chords is extremely hard but yet it's worth the effort because we can achieve the really fantastic ending of a very good conductor to you know conductor which tells some instruments please not so loud and please please I, I need you the, we have the theme it's a theme so frankly I don't understand why they don't play when nobody plays like this or maybe if you know some recording please write me down uh, under this video because I would love to here but anyway I couldn't find so this is the, the last variation and everything goes to the long-awaited end
like a dialogue. piece of music and what a long video that lasted one hour yes that's quite that's quite a long video so well maybe I should play this in its entirety for you now okay Beethoven Villa watch me and let's enjoy, if you still have 25 minutes, the whole piece, masterpiece. 15 variations of the fugue on the Eroica theme.
thank you for watching until now. If you are still here, congratulations. And see you again in my next videos. Such a fantastic piece of music. Thanks. Bye bye.